It's basically to show how this squash has really, you know, gone ahead and shaded and really covered the soil and even, even outshaded the jack beans. Forget about sustainability. You want to enrich ecosystems. Every bean is equipped to leave a positive energetic balance. Keep it pruned. We are cultivating abundance. Not a problem to cut down trees. The problem is not planting them. Hey, what's up, Agroforestry Academy? Everything cool? Uh, yeah, Gennaro here from City of the Jazz. We're gonna be just showing you basically just this little system that happened here. Um, it's where I actually buried my dog, actually. He was with me for 14 years, Paula, a brother, a son, everything, whatever. But uh, yeah, so we wanted to, you know, give him, you know, a decent spot to rest in. So we obviously, you know, done a little planting around it. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and show you what we've planted and uh, how we're looking after this area. Obviously here, this was, uh, you know, brachiaria. So very difficult to, to, to eliminate, you know, with service crops, but I think we've done that just fine here. And what's really impressive, I've used a lot of uh, jack beans and the jack beans initially really took over the spot, but then the squash, this squash, you know, so this is what's really motivated me to, to record in this little plot here. It's basically to show how this squash has really, you know, gone ahead and shaded and really covered the soil and even, even outshaded the jack beans. The jack beans is even suffering within this, this spot here. You know, it's like a, a triangle, maybe three and a half by three and a half kind of thing. I fenced it off so that you know dogs wouldn't come in and make a mess. We've got a you know like a quadruple lines of barbed wire down here for the dogs, and then you know just so that the cows. Sometimes this is the house. Sometimes the cows just around. Uh, we just let them loose. So yeah, next next to us here used to be a car park, but really it's where I keep some seedlings as well. That's fenced off. When some seedlings arrive and they're waiting to be planted, sometimes they're waiting there, and. Uh, yeah, so the, the idea is, you know, this squash, it was just from Halloween, you know, just Halloween squash. We, you know, we had a n nice bit of fun there with the kids, with the candles and everything. And then, you know, I was left, I scooped up all, all those seeds and I just, phew, you know, threw it, threw it in there. I uh, just, you know, not systematically, just, you know, just threw it in there. And it's really, it's really done a beautiful job. And as you can see, it is about to produce a lot of squash as it goes. But what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to manage this area. And I'm going to choose not to go ahead with the squash. Because even though the squash has done an amazing job. Um, I've got a lot of things planted in here. Can you see there now? You can see that those little papaya uh, seedlings coming from seed. So those are going to start looking lanky now. And if I really wanna, you know, I'd love to have some long-term crops here, like, you know, like some of the papayas and things like that. Uh, there's there's a few things planted in here. There's coffee, there's some timber wood. You know, there's there's like some, there's, there's bananas, there's moringas and things like that. So, you know, and it's not the right season for the squash. You know, it's, it's, it's vibrant, but because it's summer and it's raining and it's really hot, you get really a lot of pests. You get those worms in the, you know, those larvas inside the squash this time of year. So it's all about us, you know, planting it. Since since I don't want to be spraying things, since I don't want to be using pesticides, you know, it helps if I plant things in the right time of year that favors, you know, that kind of culture. So, you know, I suppose I would consider leaving these squashes, even if it comes with a lot of larva and things like that. For the pigs and chicken, you know, uh, for the pigs, it's, it's a, an important part of their diet. But like I said, uh, it's it's reached its optimum level. You know, it's time to go. I'm gonna, you know, let the jack fruit, the jack beans work again. You know, and uh, and see what kind of seeds are, are popping in from inside. So, 
let's go ahead i could go ahead and spray things in the squash there are bacteria that you spray you know organic stuff that you know will eat the larvas you know the little worms that grow inside the squash and but anyway you know i personally i don't even have that kind of stuff in the house um i just like in working with with processes but you know i know a lot of people that do work with those kind of sprays uh let me go ahead and, and manage this area here and show you guys what's underneath all this all right so from the inside now uh the squash is all gone i'm gonna you know see what i'm gonna do with these jack beans here i'm gonna be pruning them as well they were very vigorous in the beginning like i said but then you know some of them started really uh, being shaded out you see some of these weaker jack beans already looking a bit thin and lanky so so they can do a good job again if we prune them again check out the card felipe spoke about pruning jack beans in the last video all right uh here i'm looking for really those papaya you know we have them everywhere these papaya kind of cocktail bombs seed bombs really want to look after those so i'm going to go ahead now prune these jack beans and we'll catch up in a sec all right so now we can see a little bit more of what's happening underneath uh we've pruned some of these jack beans well all of them but there's still some very large leaves around but uh i've made sure that where i need it's a bit of light coming in you know i pruned it a little bit further down even so we can see we have uh some baru baru nuts we've got some ice cream beans coming through let's get a little bit closer down there's some coffee here this is a white ipe this is in his my dog's honor because he, he was white he was called polar this is a white ipe very noble wood from our region more coffee then we've got you know a few of the papayas that were left out it's, can't really make it out because it's in the middle of the mulching so we try and leave some of the seedlings these all sprouted from seeds a lot of the ice cream beans there survived sprouted really nicely here again a few papayas all right and I, what i've done I've, I've actually removed um the squash you know, these barbed wires are i've actually removed the squash and made like a barrier on the outside so that you know the black yarder doesn't you know slowly invade you see so we've, we've actually i had an option obviously to you know the obvious guess you know chop and drop and you know layer it all around the soil but i'm actually you know made like a little barrier here because you know we have all this black yarder over here and uh already it kind of wanted to die off already with all the shaded uh, from the squash so you know i used all that material there it's not a very dense material to cover it's very you know will disappear quite quickly it's more of a good cover crop you know as, as in when it's alive a green cover crop oh, and just bit me there no problem <laughs> so so that's what it's looking like now okay so we've really opened the light for a few things uh you know maybe it doesn't look so neat but I think you know in a couple of weeks when it rains uh things that are underneath and they start manning up now start popping through uh, mulberry planted here nice mulberry planted there as well so yeah i'll show you guys in, in a couple of days how this is looking so from the agrofresh academy crew just a little catch up on that really interesting that how the squash out shades even things like the jack beans we really should be using more squash as a service crop all right um i could have managed this a little bit earlier but it's, it's, it's okay it's okay so till next time